today. She's got many years of experience in pay touch. And, um, you know, she's just absolutely amazing. Also coming out from Brighton, so not a Londoner. So please give her a very warm London welcome. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Oh, oh, the other way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Um, it's Veronica Ruiz, <laughs> digital marketing consultant. Um, I'm Spanish, so this is my accent, so you're going to spend the best 30 minutes wondering where I'm from. And as Anna said, I am Virgin, so this is my first time on a stage. So, please be very patient with me. I promise I will take to do my best. So, I have been working on PPC for yeah, 10 years now, in client side, in the agency side. Um, one thing I have realized is that there are so many times when it feels like the client and the agency are speaking a completely different language. And I'm not talking about me speaking Spanish, I'm very <laughs> So I want to talk to you how um, that driven approach can help all of us to speak the same language. So I'm going to start with my own story. Once upon a time, I was a PPC manager in a digital uh, agency. And I can perfectly recall a very eyes open moment. I was there with a client, proudly reporting all of my cool metrics, like, you know, we give you an increase in conversion rate, a decrease in CPA. And when I finished, the client looked at me and said, I'm sorry, but we have to pause all of the companies. We are not profitable. That was a massive failure. So what happened was that we increased sales, but in the low margin products, therefore they were making a profit. The problem was that we never knew about the margins. We just had a blended CPA, so how can we help? Sometime later, I moved to the client side. And um, from the client chair, my questions were completely different. I was asking myself, is the business growing? Are we profitable? Are my most profitable products successful? And I'm pretty sure this has happened to a lot of people here. And we see this happening all the time. We see um, agencies talking about impression shares, quality scores, blended CPIs. We see, key, um, we see um, clients calling us like, hey, why is this keyword not showing up in Google search? <laughs> Even Google keeps the, uh, telling us, you have to add more keywords. You have to open a DSA campaign. And the thing is that the first thing we should all be talking about is about sales, margins, revenue, profit. Because the thing is that PPC metrics are very good indicators that are, can help us to plan. But we need to translate those PPC metrics into business goals. And here is where a data-driven approach can really help us. It can help us to provide these successful translations. But first of all, what does it mean to be data-driven? Because we hear this all the time. Um, we read in a lot of blogs, being data driven, using data. So, yeah, being data driven means that we make decisions based on data. But it is not just that. We need to find the story behind that, behind that data, and we need to learn from that data. I'm going to go through these three individually so we can discuss them. So, yeah, as we said, being data-driven means that we make decisions based on data, not on bias, not on gut feelings, not on assumptions. We're going to challenge assumptions and question the assumptions so we can validate them or reject them. But in order to do this, the first thing we have to do is to, we have to find and choose all of the relevant data. And I want to emphasize all and relevant because we live in a world invaded with data. We have data about everything. 
but we need to choose the data that aligns with your business goals in that specific moment. And we're going to give you three tips here to find that data. So the first one, think outside the box. If you just rely on Google Ads and GA to find your data, you are missing more than half of the story. You have to look out there and see which other data can help you to understand what's going on and to give you that extra insight. So you can ask your client, are you using similar web? Are you using a hot jar? You can you know, go to the news. There is, and I think she's here, uh, Jasmine Williams. Jasmine Williams, were there? Yeah. <laughs> she gave an awesome presentation, an awesome talk in the last PPC Live UK with very good tips about where to find that extra data. So have a look at the presentation because she talks about national statistics, Google Trends, amazing tips. Related to that, we all know the theory. We know that we have first party data, second party data, third party data. But when we have to go to data, we tend to forget the first party data. We tend to forget that we have valuable data in our database, that we can go to the social media and ask our customers. We can, we can email, email them. So get that data from your customers. And the last one, and to me, I have said this several times now, data relevance. We have to have relevance in our head. So when we are looking for data sources and when, when we are choosing data sources, we are looking for data that is aligned to our business goals. So for instance, you may have amazing data about devices. Um, but if it's not aligned to your business goal, or if the business it doesn't have the the resources or the investment to work in mobile optimization, that data is not relevant at that moment for that business goal. So now that we have uh, found the data sources and we have gathered all of our data, are we data driven yet? No, we're not. Now we have to connect all of those different pieces of the puzzle and we have to look into that data and those connections to fully understand what that data is telling us. We have to build the story around the data to, to get that real insight that is going to help us to define our goals, reach those goals, and learn from those goals. And here I'm going to tell you a little story. So going back to my, my first client-based experience, I was working for a company that sells holiday, um, holiday transfers, airport transfers. So you know, you go to Valencia and you want to go to Benidorm, you book a transfer. Um, you can imagine it was a very competitive market. Travel industry, very competitive. So revenue and margins were like God for optimization. But it was when we look into um, other data sources like where do the people come from? Are they coming from London, Manchester, Liverpool? Are they going to Valencia, to Bali, to Corfu? Are they using a cab, um, a bus, a van? Are they going to a five-star um, five resort, a village in the middle of nowhere, a hostel? Are they traveling with family, with friends, uh, with the partner? When we added all of those different data sources, we were able to have a much bigger picture so we could see where the opportunities were and how we could strategically grow. And the last one, a data-driven approach is a learning loop. So this is the, I think this is the best one actually, because you have all of our data, you analyze it, you put it into action, and then you learn from it so you can improve. And for those who are in the stock market, I find this like the compound interest of, of data, really. So please, always attach learnings to your results. So where to start? Um, that, that's an easy question. We start with data, obviously. So we look into our data. We decide, we look and decide, where are we? Where do we want to go? What can we achieve? And with that data, we specify a goal. We decide a smart goal. We, yeah, we decide a smart goal. We look for a goal that is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. 
this is the foundation of a data-driven approach. We need to attach a number to our goal. We need to attach a number and a time frame. We cannot just say, I want to increase sales. We have to say, I want to increase sales by 22% in next quarter, or I want to increase AOV by 15% in the next year. So when we have our goals, we have to determine our KPIs. And our KPIs are who are going to tell the story about how our um, actions or tactics are doing. So when we are deciding them, we have to think, what does success look like? How does the outcome help to achieve the goal? Does it have a clear target? And does it have a clear data source? Because again, all of this has to be measurable. We have to be able to measure this. And at this point, I'm going to put this massive word inside. <laughs> Please be very careful with vanity metrics. Mm -hmm. They look great in the reports, but they can distract us from the ultimate goal. So when you choose them, be, be very careful and um, frame them very well. And in order to illustrate all of this, I'm going to put an example so it's easier. So hopefully, uh, our client has come to us with a, a smart goal based on data. And if not, you ask for it or you help them to define this. So we have that, um, that business goal. So then we look into our data and we translate this into a PPC goal. Let's say increase the sales by 15% in next quarter. Now that we have our goal, we have to look for our KPIs. So what does success look like? Which data source can tell me about that success? And we may determine that the number of sales units is a good one here. So that can be one of the KPIs. At this stage, I will highly recommend you to look for kind of secondary KPIs that can support this one, so we can frame the, the, uh, the main KPI. So we, again, we look into data, and we say, OK, increase the number of sessions, of online sessions, and increase or maintain the conversion rate can support that primary KPI. Perfect, we have all of this in place. Now we look for tactics that can make this happen. We can decide that a new campaign optimizing budgets, we have to look into data and decide what tactics are going to help us. So we have our plan, we put it into place, and now we measure. We measure and we learn. Hopefully, we achieve our goal, and we have learned on the way. And if not, we have learned on the way so we can improve in the next phase. Why is this so important? So as we have been saying, this helps us to speak the same language. This helps the agency and the client to work towards the same goal. So it's not like the agency is working um, on increasing the number of keywords or um, working on CPCs. We are working on increasing sales. And this is really important also because it helps us to identify real success. So if we have an increase in traffic, if it doesn't go with that sales, that's not success. If we increase leads and they don't come with those sales, it's not success either. But on the other hand, <coughs> we may find that a decrease in ROAS may not be a problem because maybe we are getting those sales or we are getting uh, more profit. The same with CPCs, and I know this is like a very trendy topic at the moment. An increase in CPCs may not be a problem because maybe we are investing in more a converting and more profitable keywords. So an increase in CPC shouldn't be a problem. So where to start with the clients? There is a very, very important key moment where we should be discussing all of these basics. And this is the onboarding process. <laughs> the onboarding process of an agency should be very similar to the process to the onboarding process of an employee, or I think even better, because you know the agency needs to fully understand the business, the, the challenges, the opportunities, so they can become a strategic partner. So when we go to the process, when we start the process, we should be asking questions not only about advertising, PPC, past performance, audits. We need to be talking a lot about the business, um, their goals, their KPIs, their average order value, their <coughs> lifetime value, revenues. 
we need to fully understand the product, the, the USPs, the main products, the margins, the pricing strategy, the product strategy. We need to understand all of that. And then, of course, yeah, advertising. We need to understand the advertising goals, their budget, their brand. We all know about this. So we need to fully understand that. And then there is also another conversation we need to have in this early stage of the relationship. And it's the discussion of after the click. Because we know as agencies that PPC success is not only about PPC. You know, we need Batman and the pricing team to deliver a good pricing strategy. We need Wonder Woman and the product team with really cool USPs. But we need to make the client fully understand this. We need to tell him that their PPC success is going to be multiplied or divided by what happens on the side and beyond. I don't know if you have seen this film, Rust, from Formula One. So the same here. Formula One driver needs a good engine, needs a good engineering team. And even then, if there is a massive storm out there, he will trust. So the same here. As a PPC manager, we can deliver very high quality qualified traffic, but if the landing page is rubbish, if the payment process is weak, and if there is a house grass market out there, we are not going to reach the goal. So we need to make the client understand this. So A, we can manage expectations, and B, it opens a very interesting conversation that is actually related to Crystal's talk, um, talk that is the added value of PPC. Because PPC is not only an advertising channel. PPC is also a very powerful data gathering tool that can help the business to grow. So not only we can bring that 15% increase in sales, but we can bring amazing insights that is going to help other members of the team, other members of the company, of the business, to reach the final goal. So for instance, we can use A-B testing, and we can target a very, very specific audience that is ready to purchase, and we can help the product team to test new USPs, or we can help the pricing team to test new pricing, or we can, we can help the SEO team with a new headline. And also, also Crystal mentioned this, it's an amazing, um, it gives us amazing data we can have from the, um, from the insights tab in Google Ads to the performance of our campaigns, uh, the device data, demographic data. They give us an amazing uh, information about our, our audience. We have a lot of insights there that we should be sharing with our, with our SEO team, with our pricing team, with our product team, because they can benefit from that. And the last thing, so we have fully understand the business, we know the challenges, we know the product, we know the advertising goals. We have discussed how PPC can help the business not only with bringing the sales, but by bringing insights. Now we have to agree on metrics. We have to agree with the clients which metrics are going to measure the success and ensure that they are aligned with the business goals. So then the next time that you are like me sitting down with a client reviewing the performance, we ensure that we are all talking about the same metrics, the same goals, and the same language. And that's all. Thank you very much, Veronica. I'm sure was absolutely amazing. Um, any questions from anyone? Yes, come on, Chris. First off, that was a really good talk. Like, consider it your first one, really good. Um, my, my question is more about when you get a client who isn't data driven and might not have the data available for you. So, uh, talk about like profitability from products. If they're not capturing that data, how do you approach a conversation to make them realize the importance? of that data and feeding that back into Google Ads, Meta, and so forth. Thank you. So I think it's like coming back to the Rust picture, um, I think we have to make him very clear that without that data, we are working on the dark. So um, it's up to him or to her or to the whole business 
to um, to give us the data to um, allow us to access their data so we can get what we need to be able to work. So um, again, it's to explain to them that um, what we're going to be working on, our performance is going to depend on that data. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that will be the, um, the way to go. Do you have any advice for how to present? Uh, so you talked about some of the business value, the added business value um, for the PPC convict. Sometimes when you're working uh, with clients, um, you might have one person that you speak to that's like a marketing manager or something like that. Um, and if you if you want to uh, to convey that that business value to the wider wider business, can you give any examples or any advice for how to structure your reporting or your presentations or anything like that so that it's accessible to um, you know more decision makers uh, across the business? So I think um, if you I guess that. Actually, goes to the, um, to the topic of the talk about translating that data uh, that you can get from Insta from Google Ads. If you manage to translate that into into the business goal, and if you, for instance, if they, if you want to increase your CPA based on data you have about the lifetime value of the company, you have that data. You have found that the lifetime value of the of the customer is X. So you can work with Google Ads and translate all of that into something that the CEO, the, C, the, the CMO can understand. So they are not going to understand the CPA or they're not going to understand any of that. You will have to translate that into, into a figure of profit, a figure of um, revenue. So you are speaking the language, basically, of that. that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah. Thanks for the presentation. <clears throat> so the question is a bit like a meeting that I got today. Basically, um, we are using some shopping ads, uh, and we see that some months we have some uh, performance and some months not, because it's a different market. But behind that, how, how can I explain or how can I get like some insights for these shopping ads? when actually Google is all getting a bit more like automatic with performance max, with the shopping smart. And yeah, I can't explain anything yet other than this, but how can I speak and go further on that? So I try, for example, to talk, um, because it's also in retail and online, maybe to go further and go for the CEO and look for adding all the retailers we are working on, but they don't want. And after I'm like, okay, I don't have any answer for that. So how can I go further with these automatic uh, tools to actually get some insights and get some information from them? Um, you mean from uh, so do you mean automatic tools like you have been searching, researching in other um, tools information about? Um, yeah, I'm using like a uh, shopping app. Shopping ads. Mm, yeah. yeah. So I guess that will be you will need to try to find, um, you will need to go out from Google Shopping and Google Apps and try to find other data points from other web sources that can back up what you are seeing in your Google Shopping performance. So if you are seeing that you're not having a performance for X month, um, I think you will need to go out there in other, uh, try to find market insights that can tell you about what is going on in the market that can explain what's going on with your specific business. That makes sense. So, um, it will depend on the company you're working for, but um, a lot of tools there are, again, news, business, um, business news, things like that can, um, can help you to find a specific data for that industry to tell you, okay, there's no performance because, you know, people are worried about inflation or something like that. Thank you very much, Veronica. Please give another applause.